never will depart. His blood has made me whole. When Saul, in verse 6, when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord answered him not, neither by dreams, nor by Urim, nor by prophets. None of the prophets. Samuel's gone. Say he wouldn't even answer uh, Saul for God. God it was done. He said, I'm through with you, Saul. Verse 7, then said Saul unto his servants, seek me a woman that hath a familiar spirit, that I may go to her and inquire of her. Uh, <clears throat> King, you, you, you banned them from the country we don't have anymore. Isn't that what they should, should have said? No. Uh, his servants said to him, Behold, there is a woman that has a familiar spirit at Endor. Oh, yeah, we've been down to see her to make sure what's going on in our country and, and uh, to see how things are going. Uh, I mean, you can imagine. So they tell him, There is a woman that has a familiar spirit at Endor. Uh, and Saul disguised himself and put on other raiment, and he went, and two men with him, and they came to the woman by night. And he said, I pray thee, divine unto me by the familiar spirit, and bring me him up whom I shall name unto thee. Uh, so here's this uh, woman. Uh, sorry, I can't do that. I'm not a, I can't work with familiar spirits. It's forbidden in the land, right? Uh, well, the woman said unto him, Behold, thou knowest what Saul hath said, how he hath cut off those that have familiar spirits, and the wizards out of the land. Wherefore then layest thou a snare for my life to cause me to die? Here she's telling the king that made the rule, uh, No, no, you're trying to set a trap for me. <clears throat> well, he wasn't, but uh, she didn't know that. And so verse 10, Saul swear by her, to her by the Lord, saying, As the Lord liveth, there shall no punishment happen to thee for this thing. Now she didn't even know that it was the king yet. And yet he promised her that. And uh, how would she know that? Then said the woman, Whom shall I bring up unto thee? And he said, Bring me up Samuel. Now, familiar spirits are deceiving spirits. They're spirits of, they imitate somebody or pretend to be somebody. They will fill in a spot that doesn't come back from the dead. They call these familiar spirits. That they bring up an evil spirit that is attesting to this person's life who knows who they were, how they were. Maybe it was their personal uh, demonic angel or whatever it was that was with them. Uh, but they know the person, they know all about him. And so he says, bring me up Samuel. And when the woman saw Samuel, she cried with a loud voice. And the woman spake to Saul, saying, why hast thou deceived me, for thou art Saul? Now she recognizes the king. Why? She saw Samuel. Was she expecting to see Samuel? She was expecting to see a familiar spirit that was making out to be Samuel. And so when she saw a live person sent up, she knew she didn't have power over this thing. Here is a, somebody, this is a real person. This is Samuel. And she screamed and cried out. It was a, something she'd never experienced before in her life. <clears throat> so she cried out with a loud voice and spoke to Samuel, Why hast thou deceived me? For thou art Saul. And the king said unto her, Be not afraid. For what sawest thou? And the woman said unto Saul, I saw gods ascending out of the earth. He said unto her, What form is he of? And she said, An old man cometh up, and he is covered with a mantle. And Saul perceived that it was Samuel. And he stooped with his face to the ground and bowed himself. So he bows before Samuel, as Samuel comes up, and Samuel said to Saul, Why hast thou disquieted me to bring me up? And Saul answered, I am sore distressed, for the Philistines make war against me, and God is departed from me, and answereth me no more, neither by prophet nor by dreams. Therefore I have called thee, that thou mayest make known unto me what I shall do. What can Samuel do about it? He's already dead and passed over to the, uh, 
to his uh, place there in the middle of the earth until the Christ died and, and emptied captivity of, of hell and, and uh, the, the separated areas there that they had. And then said Samuel, Wherefore then dost thou ask of me, seeing the Lord has departed from thee and has become thine enemy? Why would you want me when you're departed from the Lord? Why would anybody want to come to talk to you when they've left the Lord and don't want to hear anything about it? The Lord has departed from thee and become thine enemy. When you have somebody that is the Lord's enemy, be careful. Okay? Uh, stay away unless the Lord sends you there to witness or do something uh, for that person. Verse 17, the Lord hath done to him as he spake by me. For the Lord hath rent the kingdom out of thine hand and given it to the, thy neighbor, even to David. And Saul already knew that. Saul already knew and it admitted a number of times when he was trying to kill David that he knew he was the Lord's anointed and was going to be king over Israel. <clears throat> Verse 18, because thou obeyedest not the voice of the Lord, nor executed his fierce wrath upon Amalek, therefore hath the Lord done this thing unto thee today. It's all your fault, Saul, by being disobedient to the Lord. Uh, don't come and wake me up from my nice resting place that I have that God gave me and where we'll be with him soon uh, just for something like this when you know the Lord's left you. More of the Lord will also deliver Israel with thee into the hand of the Philistines, and tomorrow shalt thou and thy sons be with me. The Lord also shall deliver the host of Israel into the hand of the Philistines. Uh, now he says, be with me, talking about death, talking about being in the center of the earth. Now, uh, you got to remember before Christ died, uh, there was a, a part uh, in Abraham's bosom, there were two parts there, and they couldn't go from one to the other. You remember the story in Luke uh, 16, I believe it is, about uh, how, you know, you can't go from here to there. Uh, you're set. Once you die, you're there. And the... And the Brothers, go and tell them. No, even though somebody that's what the Lord said. And he, don't you think the Lord Jesus Christ knows when he says that it won't do any good? If they won't hear Moses, they're not going to hear even if somebody comes from the dead. And so think about that when you're talking to people about God, when you're talking to them about Jesus Christ. Think about that. And they say, well, yeah, if I just see Jesus appear, no. <laughs> you're going to see a Jesus appear. Uh, that's what's coming. Uh, Israel's going to see their Messiah <laughs> appear, and he's going to be the Antichrist. Uh, and that's going to come. Uh, see how you, you'll be deceived. Don't, don't uh, think that. Uh, God will send strong delusion, he said, that you'll believe a lie. So get saved today while you can. Get your heart, heart hearted against the Lord. Thank God. Because thou obeyest me not the voice of the Lord. He didn't obey the Lord. Verse 19, more of the Lord will also deliver Israel into the hand of the Philistines and thy sons. <clears throat> so they're all going to be dead tomorrow. Now Saul knows that. And there's nothing he can do about it. Because that's his appointed day, and he's already been told. Tomorrow's your day, and also your sons. <clears throat> then Saul fell straightway all along on the earth and was sore afraid because of the words of Samuel. And there was no strength in him, for he had eaten no bread all the day nor all the night. <clears throat> so Saul didn't know what to do. What happens if somebody would appear to you? Uh, what if an angel, Gabriel, came and said, you're dying tomorrow? What would you do tonight? Say, praise God, amen, glory to God. <laughs> Thank you for that. Uh, I'll be ready to go. I'm ready right now. Uh, what if you're not? Get ready. You can. Uh, God has said these things so that you can believe on the name of the Son of God and know you have eternal life. Do you know you have eternal life? <clears throat> Verse 21, and the woman 
uh, came unto Saul and saw that he was sore troubled and said unto him, Behold, thine handmaid hath obeyed thy voice, and I have put my life in my hand and have hearkened unto thy words which thou spakest unto me. Now therefore I pray thee, hearken thou also unto the voice of thine handmaid. Let me set a morsel of bread before thee and eat, that thou mayest have strength when thou goest on thy way. But he refused and said, I will not eat, but my servants, together with the women, uh, compelled him, his servants, compelled him, and he hearkened unto their voice. So he arose from the earth and sat upon the bed. The woman had a fat calf in the house, and she hasted and killed it, and took flour and kneaded it, and did bake unleavened bread thereof. And she brought it before Saul, before his servants, and they did eat. Then they rose up and went away that night, his last night on earth. And he knew that because Samuel personally had been brought up to him to tell him so. What happens when you're gonna die? <clears throat> what if you go into the doctor and they said, you're not gonna live through the night? Well, say, praise God, that's it. What if you're not saved? You better call on the name of the Lord, repent and believe while you have a chance, because once your last breath goes, you're done. You're, you're fixed. Uh, like the ones that uh, the Lord talked about there in the center of the earth, their place was fixed. And then the Lord went and took captivity captive. He pulled the saints, the ones from Abraham's bosom, out of there after his resurrection, and the blood payment had been made for the sins of the whole world, past, present, and future, praise God. What a thing. You know, we can have these things come into our home so easily. Uh, we were at, uh, let me tell you about how the Lord put us where we are today. One of the directing forces was when we were in the Lutheran church and we were, uh, we were using the King James Bible. We were learning the word of God. I learned how to be saved at a young age, my Savior, uh, and I grew in the Lord. And so after we got married, 50 years ago, we moved to Cape Cod, Massachusetts, uh, when I was in the military. We were out on the West Coast when I got married, and then a year later, we were on, on the East Coast, and we were at Mass in Massachusetts. And we went to a Lutheran church there in Falmouth, Massachusetts. <clears throat> One of the first things after we got there, within weeks, the pastor said, well, we're going to change Bibles. This old King James isn't any good anymore. We need to have something new and modern. I said, wait a minute. You know, that's not, you, you know, you need to have a standard, something to stand on. What, you know, what are you going to use? And all this? Well, there's another old couple there. We were a young couple, an old couple, and they said, you know, we want the King James Bible that we've always had. This is the word of God that we've stood on. And so we had arranged to have a meeting of the church and discuss this issue about why we should have the King James Bible or what, or what the pastor wants to do. Uh, the, the church, well, the Sunday before that meeting, one of the Sunday school teachers brought a Ouija board to church for his kids to, to try out. So that was another big factor, right? And I went to the pastor and I said, this isn't right, this is wickedness. Said, oh no, it's okay, it's okay, let the kids play, let her show them how it works and all. I said, you can't do that. The Bible teaches us to stay away from the devil's devices, to stay away from these things. And uh, he says, no, no, it's, that's the way it's going to be. Well, obviously, then the meeting happened, and they said, no, nah, we're going to go to this new whatever, some new version of the Bible. And so uh, there were four people there that were against the changes. <laughs> two of them are in here, and two of them were that old couple that are probably with the Lord now, uh, many years ago. Uh, and... We left the church that day, obviously. Said, we can't go there. Well, then the Lord led us to a, the, a base chapel that didn't have a pastor. <laughs> and so uh, 
the base chapel, uh, the Coast Guard didn't rate chaplains, therefore we had no chaplains on the base because they just changed the base there on Cape Cod to a Coast Guard air station instead of a Air Force base. Uh, and so they, they called, we called a missionary pastor from Village of Rural Missions and he was a, a, the son of a, of a, the son of missionaries in South Africa. And he came and took that. He was basically, it was a Baptist type thinking, uh, just love the Lord and love the Bible and teach the Bible. And so we went there then, and that's where within a year, she trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as her savior. She'd never been saved. Now, let me back up on that one too, okay? So, so keep the Ouija boards out of here, okay? Uh, anything of the devil. Do we don't want tarot cards in here. We don't want horoscopes. How many of you look at your horoscopes, see what's going to happen this week? That's wickedness. Stay away from it. Uh, and so uh, we found out now, she realized she hadn't been saved. She, you heard her testimony here last week or whenever that she was thought, well, I'm the pastor's daughter and I'm going through, you know, so he's going to heaven, I guess I'll go too and uh, so forth. Well, she trusted Jesus Christ then. That made us remember something that happened a year before when we visited her uncle in Indiana. Her uncle in Indiana said, oh yes, I use the King James Bible, that's all. It's, a, it's what we stand on. And uh, he said, uh, he said uh, to us, he said, as he would take her, he said, oh, this is a good one. You're, you're excellent. You have an open mind that will, will really do my work for me. And he's standing there, an uncle, right? And he's standing there going up and down her arm, feeling her and saying, oh yes. And uh, he says, you'll do good. well. You need to stay with me for a few weeks and I can really teach you some things from the Bible. Uh, listen, this was, he was an evil spirit worker. He was a soothsayer. He was one that uh, had familiar spirits all over the world he would they would come to him and he'd tell them where where to find a dead body in some other country in some other continent around the world he would do all that stuff and he said oh it's just from the bible no it's from evil spirits she because she never trusted jesus christ as her savior he turned to me and he and he just back i can't do anything with you well, why not? Because I have the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit's within me. And our spirits clash because the Holy Spirit wasn't with that guy. And so you see the difference and see how important it is that you're saved and that you stay away from the things of the devil. Uh, so she didn't stay with him. I said, we're getting out of here. This guy's not of the Bible and the God that he says he is. And by the way, he was raised Lutheran. <laughs> Uh, see, you can find under any name of religion, you can find whatever there is in the world. The world's permanent religions. You say, well, you mean Baptists? Yeah, Baptists too. Independent Baptists. Oh, yes, independent Baptists. Uh, listen, it's a mess. People have rejected God and his word. And that's not what God wants, and that's not we, what we should ever do. Don't even think about it. If you're God's, then... Trust him and go by his authority. I mentioned those, those two things in particular. Uh, listen, she was susceptible to evil spirits when she wasn't saved. And thank God that she was delivered from them. And she came to the Lord Jesus Christ. And then we were both scripturally baptized in John's Pond out there in Massachusetts. Uh, but don't stay in a church where there's a heresy and wicked things going on. Uh, just leaving the Bible is enough. We were going to leave. If they were going to take my Bible away from me, forget it. I'm not going to be with you. Uh, and my dad, a Lutheran elder, all his, most of his life, and her dad, a Lutheran preacher that knew he was saved and believed in the Lord Jesus Christ and tried to get others to believe, uh, you know, 365 days a year, his calling. Uh, and so uh, we told them what had happened. We said, we're out of the Lutheran church, forget it. <laughs> they gave us their blessing and said, 
You go where the Lord wants you and where you have to be. Uh, that's what I say to you today, too. You go where the Lord wants you and do what he wants you to do. Uh, if it's not here, then find out where it is and do it. If it is here, then be here and be faithful. And help out with the work that God has here, the assembly of the saints. That's what the church is for. And how wonderful it is as we, we look back and we see all the different ones. Oh, Lee Thurber, oh, what a man, how he kept this place going for years and years, it seemed like. I mean, that's what you'd say as, a, as an, uh, an elder and a, or a, and a uh, trustee and seeing that things were done around here. <laughs> Uh, he'd, he'd have seen that section of wall out there now and say, we got to do something about that. Let's get it done. <laughs> well, I think we're safe right now with that, so we'll just keep on going. But, but you see how it is. Uh, we need to trust God, believe on the Lord, be saved, and then live for him in the place that he wants us to be. We need to serve for him in the place he wants us to be. If he wants you here in New York, then you ought to be serving him here in New York. People still ask, well, how did you get to New York? The Lord. I wouldn't be in New York, folks, if it wasn't for the Lord leading and putting us here. I wouldn't be in this church if it wasn't for the Lord leading and putting us here. And we thank, thank God for all the uh, miracles he's worked in our lives and that he has put us here for his glory. And so we praise his holy name. So don't go to the things of the devil. Beware of the devil's devices. Thank you, Father, for your word. Thank you that we can see these things, Lord, even in practice, and that we can avoid them. And our conversation doesn't have to be worldly. Our wor life doesn't have to be worldly, Lord. Uh, we just need to concentrate on, the, on your word and the, what you've told us to do. Uh, go to people that won't hearken and won't hear. Yes, Lord. Whatever it is, Father, you have it for us, we'll do it. That's our motto. Okay, thank you. Amen. <clears throat> Let's close with this familiar song that, uh, I mean, not too familiar that we know it by heart or anything, but it's got some good words. Number 81. And if you're able to stand, you can stand, otherwise, remain seated. That's fine, too. Uh, number 81. Savior again, to thy dear name we raise with one accord, our parting hymn of praise. Uh, what a great God we have. We need to be as one in this church. Uh, that's what God wants us to be. 81.
Are you ready for that day? God bless you as you go today, and we'll be setting up for some a meal back here and all. But the Lord be with you and keep you and bless you, make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you and give you his peace. God bless you. You're dismissed. If you haven't signed up yet, missionaries love it. Thank you. God bless you.